Okay, so in order to talk about interpretive considerations to reduce scar tissue, we really kind of have to talk about what's even neurogenic thoracic outlet and why are we treating it and how are we treating it? Um, so I'm gonna briefly go over NTOS, then the surgery, then we're gonna talk about a recurrence because that's really why we're talking about reduction of scar tissue because it produces recurrence. So Dr. Annis already went over this, but very briefly, so brachial plexus, you have your scalene muscles and your pectoralis minor muscles. So those are the two sites um, that you can kind of uh, have neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome uh, symptoms. I always describe this to patients as three big guys that are trying to get through a door. So the artery has muscle around it. So it's kind of like the biggest one of them all and it can push the other ones aside. The vein has the capability of making itself really thin so it can kind of squeeze through the door. Uh, and the nerve has no muscle around it and it cannot make it itself any smaller. So it tends to get pinched the most frequently or get stuck outside the door, um, which is why over 90% of thoracic outlet uh, syndrome cases are of the nerve kind. So please keep in mind that this is all like the way that we approach neurogenic thoracic outlet, that doesn't mean that this is how everybody keep, uh, approaches it. So when I talk about the details of the surgery, it very much pertains to how Dr. Annis and I do it, not how it's done everywhere. So it's about a four hour surgery. Uh, we do it through two separate approaches. So there's a transaxillary approach and a supraclavicular approach. What we mean by that is that the first cut, it's right underneath the axilla. Through that cut, we actually remove the pectoralis minor muscle. Uh, we do neurolysis of the nerves as it goes down into the hand. And then uh, we also remove the first rib. Then we turn the patient on their back. We make a second incision right in front of the neck. Through that incision, we clean out all the roots of the nerves and remove the scalene muscles. So neurolysis is really the name of the game. We're trying to clean out the nerves of any scar tissue, any impingement. Um, we have to remove the scalings fully because if, they, if we don't, we'll, I, I'll go over this in a minute, you can get recurrence. Uh, and it's all performed under EMG. So we're attempting to save the nerves as much as possible. One of the risks of the surgery is the possibility of injuring the nerves as you're trying to clean them out of any scar tissue. EMG helps us prevent that by letting us know every time that we touch a nerve or we move a nerve, um, there's a tech in the room that will say, hey, you know, the T1 nerve root, it's firing right now. So that we know, hey, there's, we really gotta be careful around this area to make sure we don't injure anything. This is an intraoperative picture of one of our surgeries. So uh, on this side, you can see the phrenic nerve. So that, oh, sorry. Uh, so that basically controls your diaphragm. This is your long thoracic nerve over here. And through here down, you can see the nerve roots. So C5, C6, C7, um, and eight down here. You cannot see T1, but uh, trust me, it's down there. <laughs> so recurrence can happen for a couple of different reasons. And on the, in the um, data, this is the four reasons that are described as possibilities of why people will get a recurrence. So inadequate rib resection, it's a really important one. Um, one of the reasons why we do the surgery by two different approaches is because that way we can truly get all the way to the front, to the sternum on the rib, and all the way back as far as the spine, basically just, you can get the entire rib out through those two approaches. Now, if you do one versus the other, that really limits you. If you do the transaxillary approach, you can get all the way to the sternum. If you do the supraclavicular of the neck, you can get all the way back. But if you do one or the other, you can only get one or the other. Um, so in our practice, we do both approaches. Um, rib regrowth, uh, this is kind of a misnomer, but what really means is that you can get scar tissue formation at the end of that rib. Um, that can be sort of stiff enough that can continue to cause symptoms as if it was a bony prominence. Um, scar tissue formation, that's what I'm basically going to tell you about in a minute, um, but it's the, most, um, it's the most frequent reason for recurrence. And then intact scalene muscle is another reason. So as I mentioned, you really have to go and remove both the anterior scalene and the middle scalene as much as possible, especially the anterior scalene, um, to truly allow those nerves to move freely and not get pinched anywhere. 
So recurrence does occur in a high percentage of patients. The data says it's about 25 to 30%. However, not a lot of those patients will require redo surgery. So only about 5% of patients will require redo surgery and that's and data across the board. I think in our practice, that's a pretty um, valuable number. I would say that that's about where we are between two and 5%. Um, the biggest concern about doing uh, recurrent uh, surgery is the possibility of injuring nerves and blood vessels during surgery. So um, one of the reasons why you really would like to avoid any recurrence, not only because of symptoms, but because the surgery itself is quite uh, complex when it's a uh, redo. Uh, so as part of the research that has been done in order to attempt to prevent some of this scar tissue formation and therefore prevent recurrence, uh, some really smart people decided to start using amniotic membrane wraps. And um, this was actually bench side research initially. So what they did in a horrible, horrible way is that they went in and cut tiny ulnar nerves from tiny mice, uh, sorry, from tiny rabbits. And then they basically wrapped them in amniotic membrane wrap and then they saw how fast the uh, nerve basically healed itself after they had cut it. And they found that uh, with the amniotic membrane, there was significant improvement in the rate of um, improvement on the uh, nerves. So then they decided to start using it in other things, like in our case, in TOS. So there's two things that have been used in the uh, research for uh, decreased recurrence, decreased uh, scar tissue formation. The first one is seprafilm, and it's a um, seprafilm is actually a um, see-through kind of plastic sheath uh, that it's used a lot in uh, general surgery for the um, prevention of scar tissue formation within the uh, like bowel loops. Um, and in the data, seprafilm did show a slight decrease in scar tissue formation at reoperation, but it did not decrease the rate at which people um, needed reoperation, meaning that 5% risk of reop was the same with and without seprafilm. So it works at decreasing scar tissue, but it doesn't really decrease your clinical risk of recurrence. Amniotic membrane wrap, there's not a lot of data published on it yet because we're still working on it. Um, but what we have found is that it decreases the rate of scar tissue formation, uh, as well as it improves the environment in which the nerve has to heal in. Um, therefore, people get significant improvement in their symptoms. And in addition, uh, it helps uh, decrease their uh, risk of recurrence as far as the data we have, which is only at this point about three years old. And that's it, that's all I have.